Hi, this is Joe Chambers. Welcome to Musicians Hall of Fame Backstage, The Vault Series. In this clip today, this is part two of an interview we did with Marshall Grant in Sun Studios talking about how Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two became who they were. I hope you enjoy it, and if you do, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our new content. Again, part two, Marshall Grant. This place here holds so much history, Sun Recording Studios, that, that, that it's incredible. Just think of the artists that started right here with the help of Marion and Sam Phillips. But, you know, these guys, Roy Orbison, boy, it's just amazing at the talent that came in here. And it wasn't like Sam discovered anybody. And with all due respect for Sam, he, he, you know, he's responsible for it all, but he didn't run out and discover anybody. We all came to him. We all came to him and begged him to get on record, you know, and, and so he saw that all of us, what we had, and he picked up on that and went from that. And as I stand in this studio today, I see very, very few changes. Up here, Sam built a ceiling that goes up and down like a wave on the ocean. That's to deaden the sound and hold it. But instead of having these tiles on the wall and then the ceiling, he had actually you go to the grocery store and you buy a dozen eggs and you get an egg box. What he did, he had opened that box up like that and he tucked it on, on the wall just like these, uh, like these tiles are in those days. But it, it worked perfectly, absolutely perfect. This was one of the best little studios in the world to get the sound that we got. If you listen to the sound, uh, that uh, the Sun Records had, they're, they're still current today. Today, still current. And it all happened right here in this little studio. But other than that, this hadn't changed. Sam was behind this little glass right here. And there's a little bitty uh, mixing board about that big square, which is in the Hall of Fame up in Cleveland, Ohio right now. But uh, it was just simple. Just simple. And, and everything pertaining to this room and all these records, come out of Sam Phillips' head, and how, I don't know. But he made it work, and he, this, this, uh, this, there was so much history recorded in this little building right here that worked all over the world. Nobody can argue with that, all over the world. It's simply amazing, and it gives me cold chills today to walk in this little studio here. And believe me, when we first started coming in here, it wasn't cold chills that we had, it was just nerves. We, we had an awful time because uh, our nerves were shot before we got set up. But nevertheless, this little studio says it all. I want to explain to you a little bit about the sound of Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two, which had a, an awful lot to do with the success of Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two. When we first split up and got uh, instruments like the bass and the electric guitar and John played my rhythm guitar, well, we didn't really know what we were doing. And so when I was going to learn to play the bass, we didn't know even know how to tune it. And a friend of mine, Gene Seal, had a band and he drew a picture of the neck and we put tape on this neck all over. I'd say, Luther, hit me an A. I'd get hit A and go all over the neck, and everywhere I'd find an A, I'd put an A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, went all through. And when we got through this, this neck, not on this base, but the neck was just covered with pieces of tape, and it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And so then I said to Luther, I said, let's play something. Eddie, we got it tuned. And John looked up at me, and he's sitting on the couch down here, and he said, what, what? What can we play? I said, I don't know. Why don't you play something in E? That looks pretty good. And I said, Luther, just start something, a little rhythm in E, and then uh, and I'll pick up on you. So he and John started a little rhythm in E, and what happened from right there? I would do this. This is E. And then I'll go. We stopped and we all laughed about it. I said, no, wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute. I'm not too sure I can't play this thing. I can't, we didn't have no drum or anything like that. I said, Luther, start that again, play it a little 
play it a little faster. I just play it a little faster, and then I'm going to join in on it. I said, now, don't change keys. Don't change keys. Just keep playing through it. So he started a little faster, and then I went... And then John, with the old awkward lick that he had on the guitar, John wasn't a great guitar player, but oh, did he have a wrist action on his right arm that was fantastic. So Luther, so John, he, he'd do the same thing. And add John onto that. And then Luther, what had happened in the little amplifier we had wired wide open, didn't have no controls, and he'd lay the palm of his hand on those strings. If he laid the palm of his hand on his hand and sort of muff them, and then he'd pick a note at the time, and John, that old, old awkward lick, and me here. And people think that it took us 10 years to develop that sound, and the eight, first eight bars we ever played together in our entire life. That sound was there, the style was there, all we had to do is develop it a little bit. We spent the next two or three years trying to get rid of it. But then we decided, hey, let's just perfect what we got and let's don't get rid of anything. So that's where the sound is. And we on that. So that's how the sound of Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two got started, right there. My first uh, song, which was Hey Porter and Cry, 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 there were poems to begin with. Hey Porter, hey Porter. Would you tell me the time? How much longer will it be to we cross the Mason Dixie line? Well, we put it in the world. Hey, Porter, hey, Porter, would you tell me the time? How much longer will it be to we cross the Mason Dixie line? So that's, that's uh, how the songs come about. And then we would work with it and work with it and work with it and work with it till it, uh, till it become a song. And unlike musicians today, they go in with with chord sheets or music or whatever, they sit down and they pick it the first time. It took us the better part of a week to put Hay Porter together. But then we put it together and come in here and we didn't change nothing. Nothing was changed exactly the way we worked it up at it, it, uh, Den in my house. We never changed anything I ever got in here. What about um, Folsom Prison? I mean, how, how, how did that? Folsom Prison Blues was our third record, and uh, John came to it again with a song, not a poem this time, but it was a song called Crescent City Blues, written by Gordon Jenkins. And uh, so we just converted it, much like, much like we converted a poem over into music, we converted uh, Crescent City Blues over into Folsom Prison Blues. And, uh, and it took a while to work that out. That was our third record, our second record, I'm sorry, third song that we recorded, second record. And after Hey Porter, Cry, Cry, Cry. And then uh, it just, uh, if you listen to the guitar work that Luther did on that, both at, uh, at, when we recorded live at Folsom and the original record, both of them exactly the same. But my God, just listen to Luther's guitar. Just listen to it, and you can see where a lot of the success of Johnny Cash came from by just listening to Luther, just Luther himself. And he wasn't a great guitarist, oh, but was he a stylist? And he, uh, for a long time after we started, he tried to get rid of that style. He wanted to play like Chet Atkins and Merle Travis and people like that. But after we decided, hey, perfect what we got and leave the rest of it go, then we did, and then Luther really, really caught a hold. But Luther struggled in the studio. I mean, big time, because we were all so nervous. And he was a one string player. Da 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 You know, and it could, every note has to count when you do that. And Luther struggled. It sometimes it would take a long time to get him through one song. And Sam knew that. And he didn't fault Luther. We didn't, nobody fault Luther, because, hey, here's a rhythm guitar player, all of a sudden it's thrown in the the cast of a, uh, of a lead guitar player. So it, he struggled with it, but once he got it down, wow, wow, was he powerful, very powerful. Would you tell the story of, uh, or is this the place that you would want to tell the story about how you and Luther uh, decided that you guys, or was it, by that time, was it you, you Luther and Johnny, when, well, I think it was you that said, um, hey, if we want to do something like Elvis, somebody's got to play bass, somebody's got to play lead. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, we were sitting in our den when I played three rhythm guitars. And this, we kept hearing what we call this kid around town. And this kid's name was Elvis Presley, but he had had a record. When, we, when John got out of the service and we started fiddling around these guitars, he had had a record. So and we got pretty good with three rhythm guitars. He, uh, we decided that that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to hear ourselves on the radio. And so uh, I said that night, I said, well, you know, if we are going to try to get on record, we can't go for an audition playing for three rhythm guitars. Nobody's going to listen to us. Luther said, I know where I can borrow an electric guitar. The was OK Halk Music Store up in 100 block on Union, a fellow by the name of Sid Lapworth, great friend. He became a great friend of ours. He loaned Luther the first electric guitars, an old, old beat up Fender Telecaster. And uh, so he, he brought it to, to, to the shop at 309 Union. And, uh, and he told me, he said, Marshall, he's got a big old bass up there, big old bass like this. He said, You ought to go up and look at it. And I went up there immediately and looked at it. I walked in and said, uh, said, Luther tells me you got a big old bass up here. And he said, yeah, I got one. He pulled it out. It's all beat up and everything. So I bought it for $25. And then we didn't know how to tune it. And so we asked a, a, a salesman there, had a band, played gigs on Saturday night. And I asked him, and he said, man, I don't know. But he bought a, uh, He said, we're playing a gig in baseball tonight. And he said, uh, I'll, I'll ask my bass player. So that's when he brought the picture of the neck, four string, G, D, A, and E. That's how you tune it. But we didn't know that. So uh, I'll go to the phone, and I'll call John. And I said, John, I, got it. I know how to tune a bass. I've got a diagram here. I said, let's get together tonight and tune the bass over my house. He said, you want to try to play that thing? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm going to try. You play the rhythm guitar, Luther played the lead guitar, and I play the bass, and you, know, you don't know what's going to happen. So we got together that night, and I told you about the tape. All the tape, you'll have to splice this together. And we, after we got it tuned we got all that tape on it, we sat down on the floor and laughed at it for about 15 or 20 minutes. And that's when... John said, you think you're going to be able to play that thing? I said, you never know till you try. So I tried. And the rest of it's sort of history. Try, try, try. <laughs> try, try, try. <laughs> I would cry, cry, cry. But... Uh, so it was just that simple. You know, sometimes people have a hard time believing that, that things mm -hmm. happen yeah. in such a simple way. When, when we first started, you know, we, we messed around for probably a month before we got nerve enough to come here for an audition. So all that, all that, that was right up front. And we didn't have a drum, so the slap on the bass, when, when I first started to explain the, the slap, you know, I, I didn't do that. I couldn't do that. But I could do this. I could do that, and that, that was, that's, that's what held us all together, you know, because strange instruments, we had to have, we didn't have a drum, a drum that held us together. The slap was a very, very important part of it, and I'm not take, trying to take credit for too much of the sound because it just happened that all three of us were so god-awful awkward in what we were doing, that's where the sound came from. Our inability, our inability, and I say this to the world, had more to do with our success than our ability had. And we had to build it from the ground up, from the very, very ground up when, when we played in, in my den all the time. We didn't know it, but every time we picked up the instrument, we were, we were creating a new style. But little did we know that we had created something that was going to last forever. I mean, that was 55 years ago. We're still on the charts. The Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two has made full circle, and you can talk to Shelby Singles and that Sun International, who's all in those masters, and he will tell you that it's made full circle. Not the Tennessee Three, not Big Cash or anything, but Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two, 
And there's there's kids now. I got I got a little great grandbaby, three years old, that don't know me from anything other than Papa, but she loved Johnny Cash and the Tennessee Two music. Then I got I got a grandbaby, that's uh, 19 years old, and she knows what to do. But if she can find a Johnny Cash on the dial anywhere, that's what she's going to listen to. So you know our fan base is still growing. As incredible as, as incredible as it may seem, and it all started from three old boys that just like to play together. Finally got an audition with Sam Phillips, and we put together the only thing that we could do, which was uh, we had a pretty good run with it. Still going. <laughs> you know the sad part of it all, and the reason a lot of the reason that I'm here doing this with you, is to document this because John and Luther are gone. So many people ask me every day, just about every day, Marshall, when are you going to play again? When are you going to play the guest bass again? I want to come see you. When are you going to play the guest I said, yeah, just as soon as John and Luther come back, I'm going to frill the hell out of it. But until that time, I just stick to be sitting right here. And that's, that's it, too. Uh, you know, Roseanne did a thing down in Startville this past year, and, 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 and I almost agreed to play a song with her. But when I got down there, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't walk on the stage. And uh, it'll be that way always. You know, some of the other members have tried to, got out there trying to duplicate something that, that John and Luther and I did, some of their ex-band members and all, but not me. I, I owe more respect to John and Luther than that. To get some imitator to go out there and somebody that plays like Luther, somebody that can slap the bass, that, that's not for me. I'll, I'll never do that. Never. John and Luther won't come back here, but when we get up there, we're going to play. We're going to continue to do it. For sure. <laughs>